Yuma, Bele, Yuma. Mungu wetu ni wajabu wewe. Mungu wetu ni wajabu. Mungu wetu ni
teremuka ai teremuka 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 panda 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 go come on come on to be in this place are you happy to be in this place as we were doing our intercession we were requested to be expectant of the move of God I don't know about you but I'm really waiting on the Lord the theme for this year is thy will be done Thy will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. How many of us are expectant of the Lord? In the morning we said as we raise our voices in worship, God is going to grace us with his presence in this place. Now why don't you lift your worship? this place. Why don't you lift your worship? Lift your voice to the Almighty. Lift your voice to the Almighty. Lift your voice to the Almighty. Lift your voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your Come on, lift it up, lift it up. Shetalabo, Sepra Catala. Come on, come on.
Maboze Katayan. Consuming fire, Rabakosha. 
for this is holy ground. Rababo shakatata. Yes, 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 Jesus. Mazeketeleboza. For this is holy ground. Lift your worship to him in his presence we bow in his presence in his presence there is everything we need so just worship just worship just lift your worship to him just lift your worship to him Lift your worship, lift your worship, all you saints, all you people, lift your worship, lift your voices and worship.
Salaban, 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 Just express your happiness by giving God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 I am happy now. Hallelujah. Oh, my days. All the day. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Lord, are the cross reflecting the season? Lord, is a place where we found our faith. Lord, it's the same place we found our sight. Today, Lord, because of your going to the cross and ultimately resurrecting to be seated at the right hand of the Father, Lord, now we receive our happiness all day. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord your visitation with your people. We are forever grateful that you can gather us in such a like a place. Father, to come and experience the depths of your knowledge and the depths of your spirit in worship. We are forever, great, glorif we are forever grateful as we glorify your name. Lord, with a great desire and hunger in our hearts that indeed there will be sufficient bread and sufficient drink of the Holy Spirit to satisfy the hungry and the thirsty. We are here, Father. Lord, do your will. We bless you and we exalt you. Receive the praise and receive the honor. For in Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Let the conference of 2013 shout amen. Shout hallelujah. Let the conference of 2023 Edition, shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell them we are here. Conference 2023, Asaf. Edition, we are here. We are here. Turn to the other one. Tell them I am glad I am here. I am representing myself, my family, my, my church, my county, my nation, my continent. Amen. Amen. Tell them welcome one more time. 
Are you pleased to be in the presence of the Lord? Yes. Yeah, this is Asaf 2023 edition. For those of us who are joining us on the uh, online platform, we dearly and sincerely welcome you to be a part of us. Our programs will be running for three days. Today, tomorrow, and ultimately um, finish on the Sunday evening. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe this conference is power packed. Tell your neighbor, power packed. Tell them you will hear things you have never heard before. Tell them you'll cross over territories you have never crossed before. Tell them you are in for a ride with the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are also sincerely glad because of the invitation of our father, Bishop Joseph Lecavo and Mom Janet, who are in the house. Celebrate them if you know how to celebrate. Some of you are jealous and you want to become bishops. You want to become reverends. You want to become great ministers. We are grateful for considering 2020-23 as another time for another ASAF conference. You have never tired. It been began long time ago and it's going on. Tell your neighbor it never stopped. It is going on. Tell them the rivers of ASAF are still flowing. Yes, in their depth. So thank you Bishop and Mom for organizing this for us. Those who want to uh, recognize our able Pastor Paul, you can raise your hand. The Bible says, give honor in whom honor is due. So there is nothing wrong. We also have our Pastor Dan. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, I believe we will be able to continue with the introductions but because of the session that we need to be in. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe we are hungry enough. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, so notices will come later. But allow me to ask Bishop to come and be able to take on this session. If you can give Jesus a better hand clap in this hand. Thank you, Bishop. Welcome. Wow. This is nice. I wanted to hug all of you, but just receive it. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to us of 2023. Please, you may take your seats. When Asa began some years ago, I used to make sure, I used to do everything. I did the letters. I invited the people. I, I bought the food. I persuaded the preachers to come. And I'm glad that we are in a place where I'm only invited to preach. Yeah. One of the one of the good things in leadership is to try and make yourself irrelevant. Thank you, please me take a seat. Uh, do you understand that? You try to make yourself as irrelevant as possible, where people can do what needs to be done without you. Now, the danger with that is when people don't need you, you feel bad at times, you know. 
you, you, you come and remind them, hey, I'm still the pastor. Uh, but I'm glad. Um, one time we were in, in Dallas and Dallas in Texas. And there was a lady who came to say hi to us and she was serving us. And I was with Paul here, I was with Silas and with other people. And this lady was giving us, was, was taking care of us after church service. And she told me that she was a product of Asaf. She says she was from Moise Bridge and she grew up in a full gospel church in Moise Bridge. And she, she said, Asaf, God used Asaf to make her who she became. And she was serving out of this country because of the training she received from Asaf. So we are glad that it's not in vain. Hallelujah. Now, the, allow me to go to the theme because it is important to do so. The theme of this meeting, thank you so much for the very good choice of this theme. I want to ask you to write some notes this morning, uh, this early afternoon, let me say so. And I want to introduce somebody who has been in Asaf, almost all Asafs. The one who was the first leader of worship in IVC when Asaf was born. Turn around, let them look at you. <laughs> Amy has been, Amy, Amy led the first worship service of this church. Her and her husband Rono are on the prayer mountain. So she can tell you us of stories. She has all of them. She has the archives. Dan, she has the archives. Talk to her nicely. Buy her some lunch. The theme of this meeting to me is pregnant with the future, um, with the future of all of us. The theme for this meeting is pregnant with ideas that can create you if you use them well or can break you if you don't use them well. This theme to me is critical. Not my will, but yours be done. Mark 14, verse 36, and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. I'll make a few statements, then go to what I want to deal with in, in my sessions. During my sessions, just to be emptied, I'll, I'll be dealing with the things we learn from Christ in this regard. Because he did not do his will. He only did the will of God. All right? So there are things I want us to pick from him. Three things we're going to be picking from Christ, but I'm, I'm, I want to make some statements. I will deal with the first one in this session and the next two in my session tomorrow. But allow me to make... The following statements. They're going to be too long for you to write. Everything we are doing is on YouTube. You can always go back and listen or you can buy a CD for yourself. All humans make choices and decisions every day. In life, choices are inevitable. We all have to make a choice. We all have to make a decision practically every day. And it is inevitable. In fact, it's almost compulsory. You don't even think about some decisions. Even the, 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 whatever you're wearing today, you made a choice this morning. You make a decision. You made a decision. Even in high school, you're told to choose the subjects you want. You know that? Even when you're going to college, whatever kind of college, whether it is a, a technical institute, a teacher's college or whatever, or your university, or whatever kind of college, or a polytechnic, you'll, they'll ask you to choose your course. And it is you who must make a choice 
of the course you want. Some of the choices are very open. You don't even need to, you don't need to think about them. They are very open. Some of them, I'll be explaining some things ahead of myself, I mean, ahead here. But some of them, hey, hey, do you remember the story of the children of Israel? In the night, they were led by fire. Remember that? And during the day, they were led by a cloud. Because the day, you see properly. The night, you don't see properly. The day is when you know the word of God says clearly, do this. The nights of this life, because all of us meet some nights, we need some pillar of fire, some guidance so that we are able to make the choices and decisions that can benefit our future. Nights will come and choices have to be made during the nights and during the day. Even like whom should you marry? The Bible does not say marry so and so. So you look at two, two sisters who are very good and how do you know whom to marry from? Whom to pick among the two? Or you look at two brothers and you, how do you pray about, how do you know what to do? There are choices and decisions we need to make. Your, choice show who you, your choices show who you are more than your abilities. Your choices show who you are more than your abilities. The time I've been a minister of the gospel of Christ by the privilege of the Holy Spirit, I have learned something. That somebody can have abilities but always make bad choices. Abilities are there, but the choices are so bad. And so what happens is that the person does not become as productive and effective as they should be. Because although the ability is there, the choices are wrong. And wrong choices will destroy ability. Third statement, the quality of your life, therefore, is determined by the choices and decisions you make. Now I'm using the word quality. The quality of your life. The quality, not just quantity. You can live very long but do nothing. But we're talking about the quality of life will be determined by the choices that you make. I was talking to Pastor Margaret Masharia yesterday. I asked her about a young man I know in this town. We were discussing that, uh, the family. And Pastor Margaret said, I, I asked Pastor Margaret, where is the young man? Last time I saw him, he was at the university studying civil engineering. I asked Pastor Margaret, where is, how is the young man doing now? And she told me, you don't know. He died. I said, what killed him? And she said, alcohol. He took so much alcohol, his, his, the, the, his, his kidneys or whatever were destroyed. And his life just ended. Was he intelligent? Yes. Was he smart upstairs? Yes. Very smart. To be able to do civil engineering, you must be a good boy. I did that course of my stuff. But his life, Margaret told me his life ended very early because the quality of life is dependent on the choices we make. Next statement, some of the choices we make reflect our fears while others reflect our hopes. Some choices we make reflect our fears. Others reflect our hopes. The Bible talks about hope deferred makes the heart sick. There are times we make choices because of fear. And there are times we make choices because of hope. I'm, I'm bringing this to you as I, I open up this conference 2023. Next statement, the choices we make, make the people we are. The choices we make, make the people we, be, we are. 
In other words, we make, we make choices which end up making us who we become. I want you to follow me because I want us to pick something, three things from Christ, the most perfect human who ever lived. Therefore, I discovered that the content of your character is your choice. Your daily choices, thoughts, and actions make who you become. Now, that's a long statement. But to make it short, you have a package called your character. The content of that package is your choice. The creation of that, of that content is your thoughts, your choices, and your actions. And this is critical in terms of where we are going to as humans. When something happens to you, you have three choices. Now this is important, this is my last statement before I go to the, to the content. When something happens to you, you have three choices. One, the choice, one of the choices is to let it define you. I hope you understand. To allow it to define who you are. Because this happened to me, so it def I allow it to define who I am. So, and you allow people to call you names and give you a tag because something happened. So you can, you can allow it to define you if you want. And let me tell you something. Things will happen to us as human beings. The journey on this earth will always allow some things to happen, pleasant or unpleasant. I've lived for a while. And uh, from my experience, things can happen you don't even want to see happening. And if you're not careful, you can allow them to define you. So that your picture is because of what happened. Or you can let them destroy you. Because this happened to me, it is so bad, society knows about it, people know it, therefore I am done. I'm finished. Or finally, you can let it strengthen you. Whatever happens to you, you can allow it to strengthen you, to make you better. Young people, you have a great future. There are some things I know now I wish I knew when I was your age. You have more opportunity than we had. Some of the stupid mistakes we made, you don't need to make them. 1995, a man by the name Tanel Nelson gave me his card in the Bahamas and he told me, my brother from Africa, he was older than me, I have made mistakes for you. I burnt my fingers. I've made big mistakes. I don't want you to make them. Take this card. Whenever you have a problem, call me. I will advise you. Tanner Nelson was an older man, a very lovely man. When he passed on, there's a time we were, we were abroad, Janet and I, and we flew all the way to, to Port of Spain uh, in, in, in uh, this, this island, um, Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago. If you are at the end of Trinidad Island, you look across the ocean, seven miles is Venezuela. We went out there to sit with Mama, just to appreciate what this man did, to allow me to benefit from the mistakes he made. We need to learn from Christ. 
But how do we learn from him? And listen, listen, I want to say, give you some scripture from Jesus about what I'm dealing with uh, this morning. Because we're dealing with a surrendered life. Not thy will, but my will. Not my will, but thy will. A surrendered life. In Luke chapter 2, verse 49, they had forgotten Jesus in the, in the temple in Jerusalem. They had left him there. And they looked for him and came back after three days and found him with the elders discussing issues. And Jesus said, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? A small boy. How old was he? How old was he? Twelve. A twelve-year-old boy. Now listen to me, young people. You think you are too young. No. You are not too young. At twelve years, Jesus looks at Mary and Joseph. Now he's talking to Joseph. And Mary, I'm, I'm not, you know, maybe Mary. But he says, why are you looking for me? Didn't you know? I must be about my father's business. What he's saying is, there are too many things going on, but as for me, I want to be about my father's business. That's it. You and me have a life, and there is a father's business. That's why we should be alive. Our father's business. At 12, um, I came with JJ from home in the morning. JJ is my grandson. JJ is 11. When there is a meeting at church, he sleeps in our house so that I can live with him. Sunday morning, I live with him. If I leave at 5 o'clock in the morning, he will live with me. Because he, he's begun to love my, the God I love. All right? I bought him sticks, drumsticks. He has a bag that hangs around here. In that bag, there are drumsticks. Wherever he goes, if you meet JJ on this compound, with his bag, there are drumsticks. He tells me, Kuka, when, when, when will I play for church? At 11 year old, He's beginning to learn the business of the Father in heaven. So you're not young. John chapter 4, verse 34. Now Jesus speaks something here. Remember John chapter 4 where he, the Samaritan woman, and Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. To do what? To do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. I have a passion for God's business. Me. <laughs> you ask Janet, she will tell you. I used to go abroad many times and the brethren in the Bahamas used to really treat me well. They could give me a lot of money. There was a time they gave me quite good money. And I told Janet about it before I came. So she was expecting something for family. And I spent all of it for church. Kind of disappointing. I think she wrote in her book that story. Why do you put that in your book? <laughs> to encourage others. <laughs> he says, my father's business is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. My father's business. John chapter 5 verse 30. Jesus speaks something here. I'm just using this to reinforce the fact that our Lord did the father's business. This is about a surrendered life. A surrendered life. I have so much to say this morning. Maybe I have to hurry. A surrendered life. Now, I can of myself do nothing as I hear, I judge. 
and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will. Are you there? I do not seek my own will. But the will of the Father, who did what? Sent me. You are on this earth on a mission. Your job is a preoccupation. Your business is a place to get an income for survival. But you are on this earth on a mission. God sent you on this earth. Okay? In fact, the Bible calls you an ambassador. You are a representative of heaven. Hey, you're not just a Kenyan. You have two passports. Come on, guys. I have two passports. One is virtual. Another one is physical. The physical passports, passport reads East African community, Republic of Kenya. The heavenly passport says the ambassador, our ambassador planted in Eldoret. He can go anywhere, but we know him as the ambassador planted where? Eldoret. You are an ambassador. You were sent on this earth by God. Please put that in your spirit. You're on a mission. And when your mission is finished, die. <laughs> Are you hearing me? When your mission is finished, do what? Because you become a problem. When it is over and you're hanging around, you begin cursing people. <laughs> For disturbing people. When your mission is on, God is, God is with you. He'll, he will meet every need of your life. I have seen God supply things which no human being can. Don't joke with God. And, and, and so, the first thing that we pick from Jesus in terms of this theme is that Jesus, for a surrendered life, Jesus gave up his will. It sounds very simple. It sounds simple. But I want you to walk with me. And how did he give up his will? Just before he went to the cross. Now today is Friday. We call this Good Friday. The night he was betrayed, he went to a place called Gethsemane. Have you, you're part of Gethsemane. Gethsemane means an oil press or olive oil press where oil is pressed out of the fruit seed and the oil becomes useful. That's what Gethsemane means. So Jesus took his disciples to Gethsemane. I've been to Gethsemane several times. There are very big trees there, olive trees. I mean, big, big trees. Some of them are supported and they're saying they're very, very old. That's a place Jesus used to go to. Uh, I, th I think it must be John 18 verse 3, which tells us that he used to retire there with his disciples. On that night, he chose this place called the Olive Oil Press. Now, this is significant. And he went there with the disciples when he knew they were coming for him. He understood. Now, you, do you know what we're talking about? Please, I want you to open your mind. We are talking about Jesus, the Christ. We're talking about, Pastor Boni, thank you for reading that chapter, that verse, that, that scripture on Sunday. Pastor Boni read First Colossians. Can you just give it to us? Chapter 1, verse 15. It never left me. Oh, it's... Oh. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. All right? First of all, he's the image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn of all creation. Verse 16. For by him, 
Come on, can we read together? For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions. Come on, let's read. Principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. Next verse. And he is before all things, and in him all things do what? Consist. This is the one who is in Gethsemane. This is the one who made a covenant with Abraham. This is the one who was their God. Please, I want you to take this journey. I wanted to see what he did to give up his will was not easy. If he was able to give up his will, you and me can surrender your will today. So that from now, it's not what you want to do that you do. It is what he wants you to do that you do. This is their God in a human body. And they're coming for him in Gethsemane, a place of oil press. Ladies and gentlemen, so he brought these disciples over there. I think it's, Ma it's Matthew. Matthew 26. Take us to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Verse, uh, verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly what? Sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible. If it is possible. Now, you, you, need, to be, you need to love the scriptures. You need to pause there. You need to stop there. I think it's John 12, what? There's a scripture in John 12 before I, before I, before I finish that text. Uh, give me John 12, 27, because that was earlier. Much, much earlier. Now, let's read this together, all of us kindly. Let's go. Now, my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose... I came to this hour. Jesus says, it is so tough. He's telling God, God, I mean, can I be taken away from this? Then he remembers, no, it, this is why I came. Take us back to Matthew. Then he came to the disciples and found them asleep and said to Peter, what could, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, some people use that to commit sin. They say, my spirit is willing to avoid this, but my flesh, <laughs> Jesus dealt with it. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, that is the call. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Now, when Abraham went to offer Isaac as a sacrifice, remember he was with some people. He told them, remain here. Me and the boy are going up there. Jesus carried a crowd of 12. 
He told them, remain here. Me and these three. Are you following me? Me and this. Some, this is what you call typology in scripture. So as Abraham left them out there to go to a place of sacrifice, Jesus left them there and went to a place where he was going to make a decision that was going to be a serious decision. Next verse. Quickly, please, I want to move on. Then he came to the disciples and found them asleep and said to Peter, what, could you not watch with me? Quickly, please, could you not watch with me? One hour, verse, next verse. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh -huh, next. Again, a second time. Uh -huh, next verse. And he came and found them asleep. Next. So he left them, went again and prayed the third time, saying with the same words. Then he came, to, uh -huh. behold, then he came to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping? And resting, behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise and let us be going. See, now there is, there is a version, not a version, but one that talks about, uh, was it Mark? When he prayed, uh, he began to sweat, and his sweat was like drops of blood. It's the same, it's Luke, eh? Give me that, please, if you can find it. There is a reason I'm going there. And the Bible says, as we look for it, angels came and strengthened them. Now, as, as, as I look for it, please listen to me. Luke 22, 44. Is the screen okay? People up there? And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and then his sweat became like what? Come on, talk to me like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from the prayer, he had to come to his disciples and found them. Now there is one that talks about angels strengthened him. Now when you, when you find to give it to us now, this is why I'm driving you to this scripture. Question. What could have happened if angels did not strengthen him. Have you ever thought about that? Please, I'm leading you to the will, how he gave up his will. But do you imagine what would have happened to Jesus if angels did not strengthen him? Do you know he had a right to say, Father, I'm not taking it anymore. Let me come back home. He would have gone. And God would have received him Jesus would have given up. I thank God for the angels that came to strengthen him. 40? 43. And then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. I want to encourage you. Temptations will, be, will, will come. Pressure will come. Time for compromises will come. And you may feel so weak that you cannot handle it. The Bible calls angels ministering spirits. Go ahead and ask God to send you angelic support. Are you with me? Times come when you need angelic support. We have lost many Christians because of compromise, sexual failure, moral character failure, financial failure, compromises. You know who you are, you are who you are. Huh? By what you do when you are alone. That's you. We have lost many people in this regard. Because the pressure was too much. I want to tell you something. When pressure becomes too much, there is angelic support. Jesus in Gethsemane 
how to give up his will so that you and me can be redeemed. Give up his will. You know, I like the, I like the, uh, the analogy. He went to the place where oil is squeezed. He went to a place where he had to give up his will so that his life is squeezed out of him so that you and me can today say, I am born again. Jesus is my Lord. Are you here because of Jesus? Come on, are you here because of Jesus? I want to hear you. Are you here because of Jesus? It is because he gave up his will in Gethsemane. You cannot afford to live by your will alone. Let his will be your meat. Let his will be your food. Let his will be what you need in this life. Pursue his will. Ladies and gentlemen, he did not give up the will because it was easy, an easy task. The task was expensive. The task was expensive. You may not understand. Please, you may not understand what he saw. Jesus knew very well. When he's giving up his will, he knew. He knew Peter was going to deny him. He knew the disciples were going to run. In fact, in Gethsemane, there is a writing somewhere. This is where one of the disciples ran away from naked. The guy left his clothes. He, he had no time to look for them. When they came to arrest Jesus, he knew. He knew they, will, they are friends, but they will not care about him. They all moved away from him. He knew. He knew the Pharisees would be very cruel with him. The Sadducees, the doctors of the law, he understood. He knew the Roman soldiers were waiting for him. He understood. But even with all those expectations, he gave up his will. I'll tell you something. There are things ahead of you. You may know they will hurt you. You may know they'll embarrass you. You may know they may cause you trouble. But let me tell you something. Just like Jesus, you can say, I don't care what those things carry. All I care is my will is given to him. All right? I give him all my will. There is so much common sense today in the church. We are so educated. And you know, we cannot educate the spirit, you just educate the head. You can get PhDs, five of them. It's just mental. The spiritual things which we have ignored. So we reason, we argue. God gives us opportunity to do good. But we begin to analyze. It was a tough task. He was in agony. Very serious agony. Please, like, give me Psalm, Psalm 18. Uh oh, my time is just 15 minutes. All right, let's push it. Psalm 18, verse 4 and 5. And then we write down this scripture. Psalm 55, verse 4 and 5. Psalm 40, verse 7 and verse 12. Psalm, 80, Psalm 18, verse 4 says, The pangs of death. Come on. Can we do this together? Let's read this together, all of us. Everybody? Surrounded me. And the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of shawl surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. This scripture was written about Jesus before this happened. This scripture was about Gethsemane. Back to verse 4. Look at that. It's about Gethsemane. The pangs of death surrounded me. The floods of ungodliness made me afraid. Those people who are going to handle Jesus were, the, those of you who are in the service here on Sunday, second service, we talked about the bulls of Bashan, the dogs. 
Because the writer of Psalm 22 wrote it 1,000 years before, before it happened. And Psalm 22 talks about, about the death of Christ. So this psalm, this psalm is saying, look, Jesus says, the pangs of death, the ungodly people are going to come to surround me. I was afraid. Psalm 55, verse 4. Please quickly. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. Jesus, the, the writer of Psalm, this is the Psalm of David, he sees very far before it came to pass. Psalm 40, verse 7. Then I said, behold, I come in the, vo in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. Verse 12. I have proclaimed the... For in, innumerable evils have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me so that I'm not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart fails me. Now, this is in Gethsemane. Give me your attention. I want to wrap up for this session. I'm, I don't think I did half what I wanted to do. But I'm, I really have to paint this picture in Gethsemane. And I want you to get this picture in Gethsemane. Jesus is saying in Gethsemane, it is not easy. Death is surrounding me. Friends are going to walk away from me. Second Corinthians chapter 5.21. Give it to us, please. Let me tie this in. Second Corinthians 5.21. For he made him... Now, let's read it together, all of us. Let's go. To be seen for us that we might of God in him. Please follow me in the next many few minutes ahead of me. Jesus knew very well. Now please follow me in that garden as he knelt to pray. Jesus knew very well. The next few hours were critical. I, I want to try and restrict myself on Gethsemane. But he knew very well the next few hours he will be taken before judgment. He'll be taken before the elders, before the priests. He will be scorched by Roman soldiers. He knew the next hours he's, he will be abused. He will be spat on by humanity. He will spit on his face. He knew in the next few hours he'll be carrying his cross. He knew in the next few hours he will face death. Nails will pierce through him. That's what he knew. This Jesus who did not know sin. Now this is critical because many people think the pain of the nails is what Jesus was fearing. No. No. It, it was not the nails. Nails are physical. Sin is spiritual. Are you with me? Please, uh, after I'm done with this, I want to tell God today, not my will anymore, but your will. It was not the nails, because that is physical. It was not mental pain, because Jesus and the Father had agreed that you go. The pain. Now, please, let me, I want you to see this picture in the garden. 
Then you see the one who emerges from the garden telling his disciples, now let's go. We are ready. I'm ready to go. Jesus had never tested sin. Okay? He had never tested sin. His body, now, I want to say something here that is going to demand some revelation. Okay? His body was a perfect body. Do you remember he did not have a biological father? Hey, hey, are you there? He did not have a physical father, all right? So his body did not have the weakness you and me have. It was a perfect body. Like Adam. Do you know Adam's body was perfect before he sinned? Please follow me. Adam's body was perfect. Adam's body was neither mortal nor immortal. It was a perfect body. When he sinned, it became what? Mortal. Now, this Jesus with a perfect body, neither mortal nor immortal, this Jesus, he knew very well the moment he is put on the cross, he will not become a sinner, but all the sins of the world will be heaped on him. And the moment sin will be heaped on him on the cross, at that very moment, his body becomes mortal. Able to die. Oh my God. So he knew. The Bible says, I'm fearful unto death. And it's not just the biological death. Jesus knew. Please follow me. Are you with me? Hey, wave at me. I want to, I want to get your attention. Jesus knew that the moment sin hit his body, the angels will abandon him. The father will abandon him. Human beings will abandon him. So can you imagine he's there, his, his friends, Peter, James, John, Luke, Bartholomew, Philip, Matthew, Judas, whatever. All of them had gone. Please, I want you to have this picture that the, in the next few hours, all my friends will go. Angels will leave me. My own father, my own God will also abandon me for the first time in history. So Jesus saw. He cried on that cross. Remember, he said, my my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he was alone. I don't want to go on the cross. I want to stick in Gethsemane. We'll come to the cross later in our closing session. And so this is what he's seeing. Please follow me. Then he's seeing that for the first time, when the spirit leaves the body, the body will be put in a gray, in, in, in a tomb. And it fulfilled the scripture, he was buried with the rich because Joseph of Arimathea was rich. But he knew his spirit was not going to be with God for three nights. His spirit was going to hell where the devil is the governor. The dominion of hell belongs to the devil. He's the ruler. Jesus knew for the first time he will be alone. In hell, 
dealing with the problem of sin as a substitute for humanity. He had to go there. I want to use a statement that some of you may not believe it. But I want you to get a revelation here. So he comes from the cross. The body is taken to the tomb. The spirit goes to hell where the devil is the ruler. So he goes to a dominion that whose master in that dominion is the devil for the first time in his life. So he knew, I'm going to be under the devil for the first time since eternity. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the picture? God is not there. Angels are not there. All my friends are gone. I am alone dealing with the devil and the demons and I must get justice for humanity until justice is paid I'm not living. So down there, he resisted them. He fought them. He pushed them. Took the keys of the kingdom from them. On the third day, he rose and said, I give you the keys. The pain of Jesus was the pain of separation from the Father was the pain of going to a place where your enemy is the master, is the ruler, but you must overcome him in his own domain. So he emerged, come on, he emerged from there, hell looked at him, and hell, hell knew, this is now the victor. He came to this earth from the grave, let me tell you, it was so serious that the graves opened up. Abraham and David and Daniel, the saints who had died earlier, rose up from the tombs. And they walked the streets of Jerusalem. The earth looked at him as the master. Heaven looked at him as the conqueror. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. This Jesus gave up his will for you and me to be where we are. You must give up your will. Today, we are laying our heel, our wheels on this altar. We are telling God, not my will, but your will be done from now in my life I will not serve the will of people. I will serve the will of God. I refuse to serve religion. If IVC becomes a religion, I'm not part of it. I'm out. There is a will we have made a commitment to. The will of the Father. That is what you want to do. Write this down quickly. Pastor Rono gave me this meeting six minutes late, so I'll take six minutes more. Hallelujah. The will. Write this about the human will. Number one. It has been given to man, it was given to man at creation. The human will was given to you at creation. That's why God never forces you to do anything. You know that, don't you? Uh oh. Are you with me? Do you know after preaching this session, I can go to the bar and ask for Tasca? You know that? Hey, are you there? Right now, I can drive from here after this session. Go to a nightclub tonight. <laughs> I can if I want. God will not stop me. You know why? He gave me a will to make a choice. 
I can choose. I told the story in my book. A few years after I got married to Janet, I wanted to marry again. And I'm saved. And I quoted scripture. The Bible says, if you want to be a bishop, you should have one wife. And I didn't want to be a bishop, so. <laughs> I will never, I'll never forget. I was younger, 1998. I was preaching in one of the islands. 1998, you know, my hair was there. You know. I still looked okay. And I preached in a tent meeting. People got blessed. I prayed for so many people. The following day, I was walking on the street. A lady stopped by. She was like 30 years old. Beautiful. I remember, yeah, I prayed for her yesterday. She said, oh, I was looking for you. I said, hey, what's up? She said, uh, there are some things in my house I would like you to take to Africa. Some things I would like you to take to Africa. I said, okay, that sounds all right. So what's the deal? She said, we can go now and pick them. There's nobody there. When she said there's nobody there, I knew danger. <laughs> when she said there's nobody there, that was it. I told her, please take them to the pastor's office. I'll pick them from there. You have a will to choose what to do. You have a will to choose sin or to choose righteousness. You have a will to say no to the flesh. Young man, you can be holy until you get married. I assure you, you can be holy. You have a will. You have a will to choose what to watch on your phone. Things can pop up. You ignore them. Don't say, let me just climp. Let me just look a little bit. Kidogo. The kidogo becomes kubwa. And then it becomes addiction. You have a will. You have a will. Second, God will always look for a person to cooperate with him here on earth. God give us Genesis 1.26 I believe. I didn't want to go there but let me just look at it. Genesis 1.26 Now, God can do nothing on this earth because he gave this earth to humanity. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and over all the, earth, all the creeping things, whatever, that creep on earth. Now God says, let us make man in our image. And let them... Hey, where about me? I want to close. Let, let who have dominion? Them. 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 God was saying he was not among them. It is them. Dominion is the power to govern, to rule, to lead, to manage, to control. It's dominion. God gave it to man. That's why God will not do anything here without man. Isn't that a good thing? Although risky. Because man can use the same will to oppose God. When God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he consulted Abraham. Because he would not do it without a human being. He told Abraham, I want to burn Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham said, why? God said, because of sin. And Abraham said, suppose you find 50 people. And God said, well, your number is the one I'm going to follow. 50 are not burned. He came down up to how many? 10. Who was suggesting the numbers? Abraham. God needed a human being to give him permission to burn Sodom. When God wanted to deliver them from Egypt, he had to look for a man called Moses. Remember? God would have just 
shut Egypt and told them, leave and go. That would have been illegal. God is looking for a person to use. All right? They were supposed to come out of Babylon after 70 years. They lived, they were in Babylon. It took a man called Daniel to read Jeremiah 25 that they are supposed to be there for 70 years. And Daniel prayed. And the prayer of Daniel caused God to raise up a king called Cyrus. And he set them free. The Bible says, while he was still praying, an angel was sent. Because God was waiting for somebody who is willing to cooperate with heaven. Isaiah 6 verse 8 says, Whom shall we send? Isaiah 6 8. Who will go for us? Who will go for us? Who will go for us? Ladies and gentlemen, God will not do anything here until he finds somebody willing. I want us to enter an agreement with God in this Asaf that we are going to cooperate with God, put our will down, put his, our hands in his will, that the will of God will be the trademark of your life. Can you imagine God will not do anything unless man, unless man cooperates with him? Oh, I'm told lunch will be ready in 15 minutes. That's good. <laughs> no, make sure. We, I don't want to disturb the afternoon, you know. Hallelujah. God must find a man or a woman to do anything on this earth. He must find one. <sighs> you know, God said, you know when the devil, when, when, when Adam sinned and God spoke to Adam, okay? Spoke to Eve. Then he spoke to the serpent. Remember? What did he tell the serpent? The seed of the woman. Not the seed of the man. Because the seed of, I mean, man, man had caused trouble. God did not say the seed of the man <laughs> will, will crush your head. What does the head represent? Authority. And God said, hey, 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 S -s -s Satan, the seed of the woman will crush your head. In other words, a woman will, give, will bring forth a child who has nothing from a male. Because if, <laughs> did Jesus have any male gene in him from a father on earth? No. So Jesus was basically the seed of a woman called Mary. He came to do the will of the Father. You can do the will of God. Can we agree today that we are going to be doing the will of God? That is going to be our meat is to do the will of the Father. The third thing about the will of man, man has used, man has used it to choose or oppose God. So I, I, sorry, I wrote choose, choose. To choose or oppose God. Man has always been given opportunity to choose in between. I want you to, I want to look at this scripture this morning. Now I'm hoping I'm helping us. Exodus 32 verse 26. Then Moses stood in the entrance of the camp and said, whoever is on the side of, whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. Whoever is where? Who put them on the Lord's side? They chose. They decided. Mimi. Huh? Hey, let, let me tell you something. 
you will be in company of guys in where you live, where you go to school, where you're in college, in the estate. You will be in the company of other people who, are, who have their own choices. But in that company, I want you to look at everybody there and tell them, by my will, I have made a choice. I am on the Lord's side. I think I heard that song being sung this morning. Who is Mulimba uh, Yonimba, Cynthia? I'm on the, the Lord's side or God's side. People are not even praying much these days. We need some people who will say, I'm going to be on the Lord's side, the place of prayer. I'm going to be on the Lord's side, the place of missions. I spoke to my sister's granddaughter. She says a girl. She's 19. She's heading to Burundi for a mission. There is a group, Africa something, that raises young people and sends them to universities for mission. And she's heading to Burundi. I called her, she's Michelle. I said, Michelle, tell me about yourself. And she spoke about her passion for souls until I got shocked. I told her, I'm going to work with you. 19 year old girl, passion for missions. And she's already in the mission world. 19 years. I think there's a question, was it Paul who asked some years ago? When somebody wrote the song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine, what was your grandfather doing? Are you with me? What was your grandfather doing? Bewitching people? Drinking alcohol? Smoking tobacco? You must become the new generation. You must become the generation that says, I choose the side of God in everything. I choose. Please, let's, let's look at this. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. I call heaven and earth as witness today, witnesses today against you, that I've said before you, come on, talk to me. I've said before you, uh-huh, read. No, 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 take us back to the beginning. Please, we are closing. I want you to internalize this. Internalize it. Put it in your spirit. Let's go. That I've said before you, life and death, Blessing and cursing, therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live. It is said before you blessing or curse, life or death. May you choose the will of God. Come on, may you choose the will of God. Give up your will this day, choose. The will of God. Joshua 24, 15. And then 1 Kings 18, verse 21. Then we close. Let's read that together, all of us. Let's go. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Choose. I'm giving you choices this morning between the will of God and your own will. I didn't even say the will of your pastor or your bishop. No. Some of them have tricks. You don't know what they do in the night. Oh. There are things bishops do. If you just run after them, you will, you will tap the anointing of what they do in private. But God still has a remnant. God still has a remnant of people 
you can trust. Pastors of integrity, bishops of integrity, God still has a remnant. Joshua. Is it Joshua the last one we're reading? 1 Kings 18 verse 21. And Elijah came to all the people and said, how long will you falter between two opinions? And this is a question I want to ask you. How long will you falter between your will and God's will? How long? How long will you play games? How long? How long will you be between opinions, ideas, opinions, ideas? How long? If can we read on? If the if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. <sighs> you know the story, don't you? Mount Carmel. He told them, if it is God, it's God. If it's the devil, it's the devil. Now I want to give you an opinion this morning. It's either God or your religion. It's either God or your flesh. It's either God or your own things. But as for me, it is God's will. That's my desire. Are you with me? Hey, as for me, it's God's will. Yeah? Let's make it simple. God, what is your will? I want to do it. From now, don't serve people. Serve God. Are you with me? Stop serving people. Serve who? God. I know you must serve God through people, but choose the people you serve through. You're wasting your life. Religious gimmicks. As of 2023, must produce people whose wheels are going to be packaged komagunia, komagunia hapa, and taken out of the fire. There must be a divine fire in this place this week, this weekend. There must be a divine fire around this building where your will is going to be burnt in there and the will of God is become, going to become your priority. The will of God. Stand on your feet. Let's just thank God for his goodness. Anything. Hallelujah. 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 As of 2023, the surrendered life. I'll give you the marks of a surrendered life, God willing. The life that is given up, which can say like Paul, it is not I that live. Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ on the cross. So the first thing Jesus gave up was his will. Let your will fall within his custody. My soul says yes. Says yes to you. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. My soul says yes. I spoke with my daughter Joy. We talk almost every week, maybe twice or three times. And she told me, Daddy, 
I saw a job advertised by World Health Organization. It's a job I can do from my house. I don't need to go to school. I don't need to go to the office. I can, I'll be going to the office. The, uh, uh, she applied for the job. She got it. Now, it's a certain number of hours per week. You know, in America, they work in hours. So World Health Organization was give, gave her a job. The, the money was good. So she says, Daddy, I'm going to think of, to pray about it. I talked to her the other week and she said, Daddy, I prayed over it. I realized what they wanted me to do. Yes, the money was good. It was a certain number of hours per week. They would pay her like $50 an hour. Something she would do from her house. And it would never interrupt with her, her, her studies. But because of what they wanted her to do, she said, no, I will not take the job. Because in me, if it is not the will of my Father God, I will not do it. That touched my heart. For a girl who needs money, school fees is high, housing, you know, everything. We had to work so hard as family to get her to school. We denied ourselves many things for her to go to school. Now here is a job from World Health Organization. She will be reporting to the office once a week. The rest of the work she will do from her computer. And she said no. Because part of it, not all of it, part of it was, a, was against her convictions. Can we do that song one, two more times? I want you just to cry to God and tell God, it's no longer my will. I surrender my life to you completely. Totally. Can we do it two, three times? Oh, my soul says yes. My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. Says yes. Says yes. to him a surrendered life I lay it down this day. Oh, Shambhalamo. I lay it all down. My soul says yes. My will, I lay it down. I give up my will in everything I do. I give up my will this day. Only the will of God. Only the will of God. I seek to do your will. Oh, oh, Shamba Seba Bobo. Oh, Shanda Lala Bobo. Oh, Ribaba 
Say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. As you did in Gethsemane, I surrender my will to you. In my choices, in my decisions, let your will be done. In the present, in the future, let your will be done. Deliver me from the spirit of pride, self-seeking, self-pleasing, Deliver me from arrogance, boasting, even abuse of my gift because of human things. Today, I lay my will before you. Lord, I give you my heart. Give you my soul I live for you Oh! 